Hello grade 8 students. In this video we're going to talk about characteristics of the specific immune response. This is chapter 1, activity 5, the characteristics of the specific immune response. In this video we will differentiate between the primary and the secondary immune response regarding the latency period, the amount of antibodies secreted and also about the duration of the response about the time this response will stay in the body so we will differentiate between primary and the secondary immune response so first what is the primary immune response and what is the secondary immune response the primary immune response you have to keep it in mind that it's the immune response upon the first contact with the pathogen. So primary immune response, it's the immune response upon the first contact with the pathogen, whether it's bacteria, a virus, a parasite, or whatever. So the first time, the first contact with this pathogen is referred as the primary immune response. Whereas, the secondary immune response is the immune response upon the second contact, but with the same antigen or with the same pathogen. So, primary immune response, as I said, is the immune response upon the first contact with the pathogen. Whereas, the secondary immune response is the immune response upon the second contact with the same pathogen okay let's see this case first we have the recognition of the antigen first step of the activation second step we have the multiplication also it's called the amplification or the proliferation the increase in the number of the immune cells and then we have differentiation the third step so first step in the process is the antigen recognition or the recognition of the antigen. Second step, it's the multiplication of the immune cell or the proliferation or their amplification. You notice here they increased in number and then the differentiation. Either they differentiate into antibody secreting cells or memory cells and we will discover What's the function of the memory cells? And this will be the effector cells. Antibody secreting cells will become the effector cells and memory cells. We will talk about them in the coming slides. So you have to know that multiplication is also referred as the proliferation or amplification. Both they have the same meaning, increase in number. Antibody secreting cells. From now on, they are called the plasma cells so antibody secreting cells they are antibodies but the effector they are b cells sorry but the effector b cells they are called the plasma cell so the mature and the effector b cell that's able to secrete antibodies is called plasma cell during differentiation step a cell will differentiate either into an effector cell that's able to secrete antibodies in the case of B lymphocytes or that's able to kill other cells by the case of T lymphocytes. So during differentiation, a cell differentiates either to effector cell like plasma cell or the effector T cell or it differentiates into memory cells. Memory, they will be kept to be used and the second time and we will know exactly what is the function of the immune cells so as i said effector b cells they are called the plasma cells that are able to secrete antibodies so we call them the antibody secreting cells whereas the effector t cells they are called the killer cells okay here the graph is showing the amount of the antibodies in the AU arbitrary units 
as a function of time and days. This is the graph showing we inject the antigen at time zero. We inject the antigen here at this time. So the first response is called the primary immune response. While at time 50 days, we inject the same antigen for the second time. So the immune response would be the secondary immune response. Let's see here. Let's start with the latency. What is the latency? The latency is the time needed for the immune response to start. Here, in the primary immune response, the time needed for the immune response to start represents about 10 days. This is the latency. While in the secondary immune response, it takes two or three days. Let's say two to three days to start. Okay, here. So we started from the second injection. So the immune response, the secondary immune response, it takes about two to three days to start. Whereas the primary immune response, it takes 10 days. So this is what is called latency. So the latency is the time needed for the immune response to start. In the primary immune response, it takes about 10 days. Whereas in the secondary immune response, it takes about two maximum three days. So which one is faster? Sure, it's the secondary immune response. Let's see here the amount of antibodies. In the primary immune response, the amount of antibodies, it was two arbitrogens, two AU. Whereas in the secondary immune response, the amount of antibodies is high. It reaches about six AU. So the primary immune response, low amount of antibodies, two AU. While the secondary immune response, high amount of antibodies, 6 AU. So the primary response, low amount of antibodies, while the secondary immune response, high amount of antibodies. Let's move now to the duration of the immune response. The duration of the immune response, let's say it started at day 10 and it finishes at day 40, let's say. So what do we call this? This is called a short duration. So, as we said, the primary immune response, it started day 10 and it ends at day 40. So, it has about 30 days of function. So, it's duration in about 30 days. Okay? So, we have protection for about 30 days. Whereas, the secondary immune response, it started at day 52, for example. Okay? So, it started at 52. It ends at 90. So, it's approximately 38 to 40 days. So it's a longer duration of protection. So the primary immune response, shorter duration of protection or response, whereas the secondary immune response, longer duration of protection and response. So here, the primary immune response, as I said, short duration of response, low amount of antibodies, and it takes a longer time to start. So it starts about day 10, let's say. Whereas the secondary immune response, longer duration of response and protection, high amount of antibodies, and it starts after about five days of the second injection. So here, this table is showing the comparison between the primary and the secondary immune response regarding the latency which is the time needed to start the immune response the amount of antibodies and the duration of the response so the primary immune response as we know it has a long latency so it needs a longer time to start whereas the secondary immune response it needs a shorter time here i'm going to solve this table and complete it according to the exercise found okay so it has a long duration about 12 days whereas the secondary immune response it has a short duration about five days short time amount of antibodies low amount of antibodies in the primary 
we ask high amount of antibodies in the secondary duration of the response it's short in the primary and your response while it's longer duration and longer protection in the secondary immune response so you have to keep in mind that primary immune response takes a long time to eliminate the infection but it produces specific memory b and t cells these b and t cells will be used in the secondary immune response that's why secondary immune response will take a shorter time and it's more efficient why because of these memory cells because we have memory b and t cells from the primary so we have for example like a reservoir of b and t cells they are ready to attack the pathogen so the immune response will be faster will be more efficient and will be more protective for a longer duration of time and this is the importance of the memory so what are the results of the primary immune response eliminate the foreign antigens and it produces memory b or t cells that's why for example if i had a flu virus the first time i get the virus it needs about seven to eight days to eliminate this virus while upon the second encounter for of the same antigen which is the flu virus it takes about three to four days this means that the secondary immune response it's more efficient what are the advantages of the secondary immune response it's faster let's delay meaning that it starts faster high amount of antibodies and stays for a longer duration of time